Hi, I am Dr. Sakib, and uh, this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. And uh, as you know, I have started with you a series on the lectures of the spinal cord. And uh, now I am doing the series of lectures on spinal cord clinicals. I mentioned in, in the previous topic, the previous video, which was on the blood supply to the spinal cord, a very detailed discussion. And uh, I mentioned some aspect of the spinal cord ischemia. And uh, today I will discuss with you the anterior cord syndrome in the detail. Anterior cord syndrome or anterior spinal artery syndrome. So let's see that considering the importance of the spinal cord, it is very surprising that it has a very meager blood supply. The size of posterior and interior spinal arteries is small and of variable diameter. And the reinforcing segmental arteries vary in size and number. Posterior one third of the cord receives its arterial supply from the posterior spinal arteries, which are two in number. Anterior two thirds of the cord receives its arterial supply from the small anterior and cylinder anterior spinal artery. Of course, this is one. So the two posterior spinal arteries and one anterior spinal artery. And this anterior supplies a larger area. You, here you see in the picture, this is the uh, this uh, demarcated area, more area, and this uh, shaded one. This is the area supplied by the anterior spinal artery, which is a single and slender. And this is the area supplied by the posterior spinal arteries, which are two. So this is um, and, uh, this uh, artery, the anterior two thirds supplying the by this uh, artery, which is the uh, anterior spinal artery. It supplies the anterior white column, anterior gray column, and the anterior part of the lateral white column and the root of the posterior horns. So damage that takes place is bilateral, as there is only one spinal artery. So let's see and spot out these things. Here you could see this is the corticospinal tracts. This is the lateral one. Uh, this is the anterior, anterior corticospinal tract. This is the lateral corticospinal tract. These are the be damaged. You could see here this, and you could see this here. That it should be damaged. And also again, you see here, here the anterior horn cells would be damaged. And uh, here you see this one, this picture. These are sending tracks. Uh, this is the anterior um, uh, spinothalamic tract. And uh, this is a lateral spinothalamic tract. They would be damaged. That means the anterior white column and the lateral white column would be damaged, right? So also you see this uh, roots of the um, posterior, uh, posterior nerve roots are also damaged over here. You could see this here. So let's move on. So uh, now what is the repercussion of damage of each and every part of this? When the anterior spinal artery is occluded, the following signs and symptoms may be produced. Loss of the motor function, which is you know, you know, known as a paraplegia, below the level of the lesion takes place as there is bilateral damage to the corticospinal tracts. This here and here and here and here. This is anterior corticospinal tract. This is a lateral corticospinal tracts, uh, right? And then is the bilateral thermoanesthesia and analgesia. It takes place below the level of the lesion as there is bilateral damage to the spinothalamic tracts. So this is, you see, this is the anterior spinothalamic tract over here, and here would be the lateral spinothalamic tract. This is a damaged, and these sensations would be lost. The resulting in thermo anesthesia and analgesia. Here you could see this is an enlarged form of the picture. We discussed already, right? So another sign and symptoms list weakness of the limb muscles may take place as there is damage to anterior gray horns in the cervical or lumbar regions of the cord, right? These are the anterior horn cells lying here in the anterior horn of the, this gray matter of the spinal cord. This is the gray matter outline, butter supply shape. And this is the anterior horn cells lying here. And if these are damaged and the lesion is in the lumbar or cervical lesion, and uh, that will result in the 
you know weakness of the limb muscles is if it's uh, the cervical lesion the limb, uh, upper limb muscles would be affected and if the damage is as the lumbar lesion the lower limb muscle would be uh, damaged weakened loss of the bladder and bowel control takes place due to the damage of descending autonomic tracts position sense light touch and vibration are intact why as there is preservation of dorsal columns which are supplied by posterior spinal arteries you you could see this these are preserved of of course these are supplied by the you know posterior spinal arteries and this is the dorsal column medial lemniscus right this system is preserved so these sensations would be intact which are the position sense light touch and vibration so and uh, this was the sign and symptom we were uh, discussed now you let's see uh, t4 and l1 segments of the cord are particularly vulnerable to ischemia right these are very i mean uh, vulnerable to ischemia t4 and l1 because uh, here the blood supply is very compromised this is the thracolumbar uh, region and uh, here um, even the artery of adam quaich is uh, there but still there is danger to uh, that ischemia and uh, let's see its causes anterior cord syndrome causes so atherosclerosis aortic dissections aortic aneurysms trauma to aorta any surgical procedure in which severe hypotension takes place disc prolapse i will discuss very soon a separate video on disc herniation or disc prolapse and also on the anatomy of the intervertebral disc soon that video will be coming on my channel learning anatomy so neoplasm which is also resulting in um, anterior cord syndrome one of the surrounding area and any nerve block procedures and vertebral column damage at the particular level producing the symptoms and signs of related to that level so the diagnosis of anterior cord syndrome is done by an mri right magnetic resonance imaging what is the prognosis of this anterior cord syndrome this is poor and mortality rate is very high so thank you very much for i mean uh, watching that uh, in my brief uh, and short video i thank you very much and ask you and request you to please subscribe my channel like and share and do comment below to encourage me and uh, uh, if you notify it would be better uh, to get um, uh, and, uh, familiar to the new videos as they are uploaded thank you very much bye